Hey everybody, I'm Suzanne Barrett-Justice, and in today's video, we're going to paint a German Shepherd. And this is for a client of mine that I've done several pieces for before, and um, yeah, so I'm blessed to have people that think enough of my work to come back for others. So stay with me, and we're gonna go ahead and jump into this German Shepherd. And if you are my subscribers, as always, thank you so very much. And if not, please consider subscribing. And this is the dog that we're going to paint. I'm gonna set that, that picture right up here so you can see. And uh, she's obviously a beautiful, beautiful German Shepherd and her name is Shotzi. And this is a posthumous portrait. So again, in the events, but we have posthumous portraits and it's obviously not an opportunity to get more photos. We wanna work from the best ones we have. And I have several that I'm working from, but mainly this one right up here. So stick with me, we'll jump right into this portrait of Shotzi. Since my substrate is a raw wood, I'm putting an acrylic primer, if you will, on the uh, substrate before I actually get started. And then I go ahead and sand it down just a tad before I do a little bit of a sketch. All right, here's our setup. So with our palette today, we're start, I've got um, ivory black, burnt sienna, yellow ochre. I have Van Dyke brown, raw umber, burnt umber, and just a tad of cadmium red. And the reason I have the cad red is that this dog, this shepherd happens to be very warm in color and I know I'll be using it in her eyes, but I like to start off with those colors. Um, you know, those are good right there. Good German shepherd colors for me. Um, I've got ultramarine blue. I have two uh, titanium whites here and um, diaxazine purple. Now, I have done work for this particular client before, and I actually went back to check on the last portrait I did, and it was in 2018, um, and they wanted a purple background. Um, they had a um, another dog that I painted, and it had a purple background. I'm not really feeling purple so much, maybe a, a purpley gray for this one, simply because she does have a lot of yellow ochre in her, and here's the reference that I'm using. So if I, let me see if I turn this light off, if it'll show out a little bit better. Um, so you can see there's quite a bit of yellow ochre in here and, um, you know, yellow color. So that really will help um, pop the dog out a little bit. The brushes that I'll be starting with today, I'm starting with a number eight Rosemary Shiraz Filbert. I have another number five uh, Shiraz Filbert here. And I have an ivory pointed round. I'll probably switch off, especially when I get into some of the detail later to do some more, um, you know, some other colors. But for now, that's what we're starting with. I went ahead and primed, this is a wood panel. This is a two inch, you can see it's pretty deep, uh, wood panel. And I went ahead and as you saw earlier, I did put a, um, just a little bit of, um, um, acrylic paint down. I just went with this cream background it's, and it's really hard to see in the video because basically the wood is the same color, but I wanted just to have something to backdrop off. When painting on wood, sometimes when you put the paint down, it kind of swells the fibers up. So I'm sort of kind of sealing or just grounding this a little bit. doesn't mean that this is the background color I'm necessarily going with. It's just what I pop down there just to give me something to jump on. And uh, I do want my paint to, to grip. So I am always looking, um, you know, just something for a different surface. And I did sand it lightly just to smooth it down a little bit. Now I did a rough, <laughs> really rough uh, charcoal sketch and I can already see problems with it, but I will be able to adjust when I'm painting. Not a problem. Beautiful thing about vine charcoal is it doesn't really make a mess. It's easy to eliminate. So. Here we are. So we're gonna go ahead and get started in this painting. Now it's time to block in. So I'm using my Shiraz number no. five filbert and I'm using basically a combination of the ivory black and uh, some umber to do just to block in the ear. I'm using quite a bit of the uh, ultramarine blue up, up top as well. Um, black generally shines or highlights blue. And I'm throwing down the the uh, yellow ochre combination of, it's, it's yellow ochre and uh, burnt sienna, 
and again I am just blocking it in I've switched over to the pointed round ivory just so I can get into all the little tight places it's actually a pretty big um, paintbrush but it's got a nice refined point so it does offer some uh, you know I can I can do a lot with that one brush and that's I'm really trying to stay with as few brushes as possible so it's evident as I start putting down paint that a lot of my sketch is a little is a bit off it's a little bit narrow a little bit um, you know some of the sizes uh, of the muzzles a little large and I start making those corrections as I paint the client of mine actually has commissioned me in the past to do other pieces and the last piece I did for them of one of their um, late dogs I did a purple background and I know that this will probably go in the same room as the other piece and so I want to kind of stay consistent with what I did um, on their last piece and since there is quite a bit of yellows in the dog you know what the purple will shine out nice keep in mind folks that this piece will be available on patreon and it's full length version so if you want to catch this whole video uh, yeah check me out on patreon and you could take a look now I'm just highlighting around the eyes and I'm trying to get the shape keep in mind I am totally tweaking this as I go because I'm really I mean I knew that I know the muzzle's not exactly right yet and there's some other things that you'll see as this video goes along that things change <laughs> things morph quite a bit but I'm just blocking down the colors and, and getting an idea where everything goes Now that I have most of the dog's um, edges wet, I, it's good that I have the uh, background in the purple because I can create my soft edges where I need them. And uh, you can see I've just brought out the ear over the eye, over the area of where I thought it was going to go with the, uh, the uh, charcoal sketch. And I'm just kind of popping everything in there as I go along. And, and it's funny how just little corrections like that do make all the difference in the world. And eventually it will, it'll look like Shotzi when I get done. The sketches are basically just giving me a, a direction to head. And, um, you know, one of the things I have to be careful, I don't want to run this piece off the, uh, the substrate. So yeah, so I'm always kind of tweaking and checking and I'm checking angles with my brush. I use my brush um, handle just to make sure that all the angles are correct 
and that sort of thing as I go along. And another thing too, I often am looking for contrast. So if I'm working in a dark area, say like by the ear, I might go really light there with my background. And if I'm going with a lighter area of the fur, I may darken that area up. So you'll see that I start changing some of that too. And you'll watch that ear. That ear will keep creeping up and creeping out. It's kind of funny how it'll morph. And I almost wish that I had even a, a, a higher time lapse just so you can see this thing <laughs> morph along. It's kind of funny. So here's what I was talking about earlier. I was just saying that I'll, I'll darken some of the background just a little bit so that I have something to make my light hairs stand up. And I'm actually just using this uh, little paint scraper to suggest where the light hairs are gonna go. And you know what, paint scrapers are just awesome because I can make some corrections and it, it helps me see things a little bit more clearly sometimes. So I already know that I have to move that other ear up a little bit and I'll be changing that soon. Now the tongue, I've shortened the tongue up compared to what the actual reference looks like because I didn't want to run the tongue off the substrate and quite frankly, I didn't want a big long tongue in, in the painting. So the colors that I use primarily to do the tongue, um, I did put alizarin crimson on my palette and I'll mix that with uh, burnt sienna and white and then I have, you know, the dark values, the more um, purpley values. So I'll, I'll put a little bit of um, um, either the raw umber or the ivory black into that red to make create the shadow under the tongue. So I'm just moving through. And I do want to kind of keep it soft through here because I don't, I want it to have a softness, uh, almost a, a fade or vignette -y look to the edges so it doesn't look like there's a severed head on a, on a canvas. I, I will soften those edges up. And obviously because I am working a la prima, I went ahead and signed the piece because everything was nice and wet. And when it's nice and wet, then that makes me happy and I can just scratch out my signature and voila. So, and I do have to paint the sides too. So I'll be painting the sides of this piece. It's a pretty deep substrate, so. Um, I've got plenty there. So I'm trying to figure out where the teeth, and you'll see that I'll use that to, you know, kind of move around on the angles a little bit, just to check the angles. And I had, I had one a little bit too high, and right now um, I can tell you I'll be moving that tooth a little bit more um, up a little bit because the angles are a little bit off. I can see that here as I'm watching. And uh, yeah, so I'm using my um, ivory pointed round and it's actually, like I said, a large um, round, but it does do the job for me. And I've got to put those teeth in, and that's what I'm doing here. Remember, teeth are almost never white, uh, and so there'll be a lot of yellowing of those teeth here in a bit.
Now I did switch to a smaller brush. It's actually a little ivory rigger that I'm using to get in there and uh, do some of the tighter areas of the eye. And I will, you'll watch that I'll move from the, from the outside and cut in to refine some of the shape around the skull and the eye area. And then I'll cut back in and see, I'm, I'm finessing that brush. I'm really getting it into the angles and I'm refining the nose and the muzzle just a little bit. Uh, you know, German Shepherds do have a very distinct muzzle and uh, so they have kind of a little hump and I've seen that on lots of the dogs. So I've got to get that in Shotzi's uh, face there. And you'll see, I will even work this eye a whole lot. If I don't have the eyes right, the whole piece is wrong. So I'm really, you'll see, I will be working that eye a little bit more and a little bit more. And, um, and I'll be moving that ear up just a tad too. I can tell you that. So that little brush that I'm using, that little rigger is pretty handy to get into all the little tight places. And Shotzi does have beautiful eyes. They're just a really rich color. So one of the, the, way, the color combination I'm using here is mainly a um, burnt sienna with a tad of uh, cadmium red. And then in some areas, where it seems a little bit lighter, I'm actually mixing a little of the yellow ochre in to give it a little bit of more fire. And once I come back and work on it for the second day, because I, I got as far as I could today uh, with this painting, and I'll go back tomorrow and finish it, um, I will be able to do a lot more of the detail and really look it over a good um, and check the color and see if there's any corrections that need to be made. But for now, I'm very, very happy thus far. So I'm, I'm, I'm flipping through the painting. And that's why I like to work off an iPad, because I can uh, enlarge certain areas or, you know, zoom it back in, zoom it back out, and constantly checking off my iPad. I, I do love working off of an iPad. not tried this one yet um, it's a rosemary number four domed filbert red dot now red dot is rosemary's synthetic sable I watched a review by another artist and she said she was almost exclusively a sable user and she had a hard time telling these apart so I'm giving it a whirl 
Anyway, I'm gonna work on the eye. Forgive me for this weird lighting. Um, I'm trying to, I've been trying to mess with it and it's not working. But I am going to go in with uh, the cadmium red and burnt sienna mixture and kind of get this eye in. Now I have to kind of watch where these eyes are. I'm gonna suggest it's over here. It is a very soft brush, I like it. And the reason I want a soft brush for this work is I don't want a lot of, um, I just, I need it to be soft. I need, I, I want to have that very soft, um, so you don't see the strokes. to see where things go and so I may be premature in some of these highlights but it helps me to see where things are supposed to be so I am going to to get the shape of her eye and there's a little bit of it right in here It does have that little, remember the white of the eye is almost never white. It's usually kind of gray. And so I'm gonna just, she only has a little tiny bit of it showing right here. Everything else is pretty darn dark. Now I am, since I am basically doing this very impasto, I'm sorry, um, not impasto at all, very, um, a la prima, I have to keep a light hand. And that's the other reason why I need to use sables because in this case, it helps me to um, not take the paint off. <laughs> I, can I can leave my mark without taking paint up. And I know that I'll have to let it have a little bit of dry time, but I know that when I leave today, I, it'll only take me a few minutes really to get in the rest of this painting. And I can use this little filbert to do some of these neat little details too. of her eye is a lot darker. I am going to bring this light color up. Clean my brush off. Now, being that this is a synthetic, it really is nice. I'll bring this up a little bit. Again, my hand is super light. A lot of the detail probably won't happen till later. But I need to make sure that I have things where they need to be. Now, even though this is actually a pretty big pointed round, the tip is pretty fine. So it's allowing me to do what I need to do. I 
see a little bit of a blue purple right underneath this. It's just a purple, purple gray. And it probably would help me to be able to see this better if I go ahead and put that highlight in the eye. So I'll know where it goes. So I have to look at both eyes here. I may have to... This should be a little bit more angle. Which means this is going to come up a little bit more. This is one of the reasons I kept waiting to do this eye because I'm pretty satisfied. I was pretty satisfied with this eye, but this eye is going to appear larger. And I don't know that I have it up high enough. And this is going to come up and I can't because I'm, I'm running into that. My, uh, paint is too wet for me to, to, to layer. I may have to leave that alone for a bit. You can see I'm moving her ear and her side of her face out just a little bit more. It keeps moving out. I've got her ears a little bit more erect. Um, I am working from more than one picture. And where her eyes look very dark in this particular photograph, her eyes look very light in some of the other eye, uh, photographs that I was working from. So you can see I've kind of went between them. I actually went with a little bit of a lighter eye just to show them out a little bit more. And... Uh, and I did bring her ears up a little bit more. And you know what, I'm, I'm digging it. I am really enjoying this piece. And now I'm starting to put some of the lighter values in so that I can let that dry and come back to it on the second day and finish all the finer details. And I'm still using the little, uh, the round brush, the ivory round and and it's still doing the trick, but here in a little bit, I'll be getting out my little handy dandy uh, dagger brushes. You can rest assured that's happening because this is too much fun hair to get into this without uh, using my daggers. actually make the hairs look a little bit more curved and and I think there was a, a little bit of a black in here too from her chin there would probably be a little bit of black in here
I need to work on the mouth a lot more, but. Since I have this little brush out, we're going to grab and do some of this out here. A little bit lighter. Yes, painting hair is indeed fun, and I love getting in the little hairs like this, and I, hopefully I'm not getting the, the uh, cart before the horse here, but um, the dagger brushes are fun. But I do have to paint this tongue, and the color again that I mixed up is mainly uh, alizarin crimson and um, burnt sienna. And I'll put a little bit of hotter red there in the tongue using the CAD. Now, it's making me crazy because I know I'm going to change this tooth angle, but right now you can tell that the tooth on the left is a little too low and the tooth on the right is a little too high. They're kind of wonky, so I'll have to fix that. And that's one of the wonderful things about when you're working in a la prima paint, you can go in and use a paint scraper um, to fix that or just cover it over. It works, you know, pretty quickly. So I'm checking the angles. Eh? I noticed these teeth are wrong, so boop, took that little tooth out, and we're going to put this little tooth back up a little higher. See that? I mean, it, it, it. I know I had to drop this one down a little bit because the angles of the eyes, and so the angles of the nose, the everything has to match up. So I, I'll twist that brush around so I can see my angles, and once I'm, you know, before it's all said and done, I promise this dog will not be wonky. <laughs> She'll just be her beautiful little self. Uh, she's going to be just a nice little Shotzi. And, uh, but yeah, it's coming together, and I'm really happy. But getting those colors in the tongue and knowing where to put the detail and knowing that there's a little bit of a... Since I shortened the tongue up, it's going to be drawn up into the, into the mouth. So it will be a little bit thicker when it's drawn, and I'm, I'm making it a little wet. So you can see I'm putting little highlights in the tongue, and, you know, this is the fun details. This is the part that... I enjoy the most.
okay now to get these teeth in so I am creating the shadow and you can see I'm using since I'm my teeth are not white white they're kind of a, a yellowy white and uh, kind of a yellowy gray white and I can highlight them when I need to and put the lighter areas so you can see I layered up a little bit of the whiter white onto the tooth so you have the illusion of a shadow on that tooth and I've got a whole bunch of other teeth to get to so I'll just kind of just work that mouth and I still have quite a bit of work to do and the mouth color it's a it's odd it's kind of an in between there's a deep deep maroon color in those lips on the dogs you know mouth and there's also a lot of purple and blue so I'm alternating between those colors and cutting in the teeth and getting the actual teeth shape incorrectly because I'm kind of an animal nerd freak person so if I don't have it right it will drive me nuts I'll lose sleep over it all <laughs> so I'm making sure that the, the teeth are going in correctly so and the shapes are correct and putting the shadows in and and knowing that the teeth aren't going to be pristine and white and uh, she's a she's a dog with a little bit of age on her so we don't want her to have pristine white teeth but yep getting those teeth in and working those lips Testing, testing, one, two, one, two, one, two. All right, I'm starting to finish up with some of the detail. We're talking little stuff, but the little stuff matters. And I'm just like the little gray hairs on her chin, on her chinny chin chin here, just kind of putting those in. And they get a little bit darker as we get back into the, under her chin. So I gotta add a little bit of paint here. I'm getting close on time. I've got a student coming in a few minutes. Desperately trying to finish up the last little bit on this piece. So I just switched my value to a little bit darker value because it's a little darker as so it goes under her chin there. Okay, let's see. So we have all this weird little, almost like it's scalloped in the lip area. So I'm going to take a little bit of ultramarine blue and white little tiny bit of doxazine purple and I'm going to keep it on the very tip of my brush and I just need to she's coming sorry I'm just trying to get my I wanted to get this done and uh, I may be doing this a little bit later so it's almost like little scalloped edges
you know, when you get so close to being done, you just, you just really want it to be done. So I'm going to look up here. looking at this little areas of the mouth. I'm letting the little tip of the brush do the work. So there we go. Now I'm going to mix a little bit more purple into this color. And I'm going to do some of the little highlights that are in here. Remember, some of it is just that her, her mouth is wet, you know, and it's irregular shapes and kind of a little tiny bit of black in that. So I'm putting just a little bit of, of the black into this paint because I have the, I have this area already kind of highlighted. You can see where I'm working over it, but I'm just lighting, lightening up some of the area on the piece. It's, I'm so close, guys, to being done. So now I'm playing the game. Can I finish before my student comes? We'll see. You'll know, because when you hear me say, hey, how are you? Then you'll know. <laughs> then you'll know. So I'm just getting a little bit here. Area. Blacker. There we go. Feeling good. I guess I had already had my client look at the piece. He was he was very happy with it, and that makes me happy. And I know that I've I've done a good job, and that they're very happy with it. I'm going to look at some of the black in this area here. It needs to be brought out a little bit. And I'm, I'm just using the, and I'm using a, a small pointed round. This one is, believe it or not, it's not a rosemary. It just happens to be a very inexpensive brush that is okay. It's great. Um, just happened to be the one I grabbed. It's a, a Creative Marks um, Power Curl brush. It's one that I used to recommend for my students to have. Um, I'm kind of switching most of my students over to the um, to the rosemary because they're they're usually very happy with the results that they get right up front with those and and but these are not a bad little brush for starting out and uh, I just happened to have one and I grabbed it All right, I'm bringing that out a little bit I'm gonna add I'm gonna switch my brush now to um, a uh, dagger. And I'm mixing a little bit of brown in it. I just got back from a walk with my boy and with my dog and I am burning up. So I'm going to add some of these light darker values in with this other colors that are already mixed in here. short hairs, bringing it out a little bit more. Creating depth, bringing it down a little bit. Now I've got to put her name in her Probably put her name right up here, and it, uh, I talked to my client, and I did that on the last dog piece, and they definitely want that on this one too. So we will put Shotzi's name on here. Mm. Okay, so I keep looking for other little areas, being that we're very close. I'm 
any of these little light values that I can put in here. Always being very careful and mindful of any color shifts, and I can see it goes from the, uh, goes to a little bit more of a burnt sienna in some of these areas, like here. back it out just a little bit so you can see. Wrapping it up, folks. Wrapping it up. Okay, too dark, too light. student I see her coming so we will almost done and I'm probably finished this a little bit we'll stop for now but we're close all right so at this point got her name on that's like so far the hardest part of this whole painting is getting the name but um, and the reason I did the name on here was because I did that for their other dog and they asked that was a request so Generally, I'm not going, I, I don't usually bring that kind of stuff up unless they, um, for, for some it's, they don't want that on the painting, but for others they do, and that's, so that's why that's there. But anyway, at this point, I am just going to look for little hairs and details that I maybe missed. I'm going to put a couple little gray hairs in this area of her neck. Just wherever I can see a little bit of light. And here we have Shotzi, and and you're this is probably a better angle, so you're able to appreciate it a little bit differently than the angle that a lot of times my uh, camera is when I'm filming. 
So there we are. I'm really pleased with how she turned out. I had, you know, of course, things like the area of the mouth is always a, a kind of a challenge. Um, I, and I like that she definitely is, you can tell there's a certain femininity, femininity to her. And I wanted to capture that as well. Cause sometimes with larger dogs, it's a little bit harder to capture. And it really wasn't with Shotzi. Here is our palette, our finished palette. You can see, we remember how we started out and now it's a big hot mess, but you can pretty much tell these are tongue colors. And then here's my cat that gets used a lot into some of the, uh, um, the fur colors when I'm really wanting to warm it up. You can see I have, I still kept my cool colors up at the top. And um, yeah, I mean, you're able to see that even within this big hot mess you see, I knew where all the colors are, what each color was used for. And I would tell you, you know, when I'm working with my students here in the studio, I will show them how I place a palette and I'll explain why I place my palette in such a way. But I will always tell them that they, as long as they can explain why they put their palette out in said way, it, it's okay because mine will change from time to time. Often I usually have my cool colors grouped together and my warm colors kind of grouped together. And then, or it may be what body part I'm working on. Of course, I said, here's my tongue colors. Um, a lot of the same colors that went into the fur, went into the teeth, etc. So I at least know where my, where my paints are. And even though it doesn't look organized, trust me, this is actually quite organized. And I know I don't have to waste a lot of time trying to guess where my paint is. I know exactly where it is and I know what color I'm searching. So there you have it. Um, here's again the reference that I worked from to do Miss Shotzi and um, I'm, I'm pretty pleased I, I, I am pleased with how she turned out I did change the mouth up a little bit didn't want quite as long a tongue and I do like how that turned out so there she is Miss Shotzi I hope you enjoyed today's video if you did please give me a thumbs up I appreciate it and if you have any questions whatsoever please leave it in the comment section I'll get to you and I hope you had fun and here we are and this is Shotzi's piece now this was done um, on a 10 by 10 um, cradle panel so it's painted on all all the edges and uh, this was a fun piece to do and I you know I grew up with German Shepherds I love the breed and I haven't I'm not really around them much anymore and it's been a long long time and that since I've painted one and uh, yeah I had a ball so I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did give me a thumbs up please I appreciate it and if you are my subscribers thanks so much I appreciate you uh, beyond belief and if you're not my subscriber please join me you know go ahead and hit the button and be a subscriber and you'll know when the next video comes out and who knows uh, it could be another dog it could be a horse it could be landscape you know what you guys can tell me and leave it in the comment section and you might help pick the next subject for the next video so and know that this particular piece will be available on my patreon channel so from kingsport tennessee i want to thank you so much for joining me and i will see you later bye